Hey everybody, I'm Sean Powers, and most of you know that I'm setting up a micro data center, which is just kind of a term I made up, uh, at my farm. I have commercial grade fiber, I have a server rack, I have a bunch of servers, and pretty soon I'm gonna give you a whole video tour of the whole process. But part of that was my need to get a more substantial router than the Unify USG Pro that I was using because it doesn't handle external multiple WAN IP addresses very well. And I needed to go back to something with more power like PFSense based uh, routers. Now I have, I've purchased and I've used in the past, this is a, a NetGate 3100. Uh, this is actually a NetGate SG8846 or something like that. One U rack mount unit, uh, both very, very powerful routers. And I was going to use one of these because several years ago, I stopped using PFSense. There was a problem uh, with keeping state and my Plex server. It was, it was a real pain in the butt. It turns out I'm pretty sure it was something to do with uh, FreeBSD itself. And I think that's been fixed so I can use PFSense again. I'm super excited. Uh, but when I went and looked online, the uh, rack mount one is end of life. Uh, I could still use it, but it's not supported. It's not sold. It's end of life. And then the 3100, uh, this one is it's end of sale. They don't sell it anymore. It's still uh, supported. Uh, and of course I could still use that. And my plan was to use that uh, because it will do full gigabit routing. Uh, but I was just kind of bummed that it's like end of sale. So it's like on its way out. And I'm just bummed because, um, you know, I'm setting up this new data center and I'm using just about expired technology. Anyway, the awesome folks at NetGate saw my tweet and said, hey, Sean, you know, we have the 4100 that is replacing the 3100. And if you review it, we'll send you one. I'm like, sweet. I'm really bad about this whole like review thing. I wasn't, this isn't a sponsored video. Um, they didn't pay me for a review. They did send me the review unit and I get to keep it, which is awesome. Uh, but I made it very clear that I was going to give an honest review. They didn't buy a good review from me. I mean, hopefully you all know me well enough to know that I wouldn't do that anyway. That's just not the kind of person I am. Uh, so yeah, I should have probably put that at the beginning of the video. I don't know. Anyway, so I have a 4100, uh, an SG4100 from NetGate. It looks similar to this. I can't show it to you though, because it's currently at my farmhouse routing traffic. It's so cool. They also sent me a rack mount adapter that isn't even for sale yet. It's going to be for sale in like a week. That is just awesome. So uh, I have a full written out review with far too many words because I just had lots to say about it. I'll put a link in the doodly doo uh, description down below so you can check out the full review. But uh, the long story short, it's an incredible router. PFSense itself, it's PFSense Plus, which is a longer story, but it's PFSense uh, based and it does great routing. It has independent LAN ports. So the, there's four LAN ports on the back. Each one of them can be configured independently rather than just like blocked together in a switched interface. You can, you can do separate things with each one of them. Like, uh, for example, I have one of the LAN ports bridge with the LAN port so I can have my USG actually still routing traffic on one of the IPs at my farmhouse while I transition. It's really powerful and PFSense allows you to do that. Uh, and like I said, the, the ports are all independent. It's just really, really cool. Now I'm going to take you to my farmhouse, uh, to show you actually mounting it in the rack with the new rack mount uh, server or new rack mount adapter that they sent. It's really great because the whole unit, the rack mount adapter is solid aluminum. So it helps with heat dissipation. Uh, the 4100, the bottom of it, the underside is completely aluminum with fins for cooling. It's passive cool, there's no fan, uh, but that actually bolts on. And so the, the entire aluminum rack mount adapter becomes part of the heat sink. It's just really, really well designed. I couldn't find a whole lot that, you know, to give a con, you know, I usually give pros and cons. I couldn't find a whole lot to, you know, diss about it. Uh, I did put a couple things in the, um, in the review. Like I always, I, in fact, this has it too. I've always found the lights on the front a little strange with the NetGate appliances because it's not clear what they do. There's shapes and colors, but there's no words to tell you what they mean. So that's just a little nitpick. Um, and there's not, there's just not much else because the only the other, the other big nitpick I had was, oh, I can't rack mount it. And then they went and made an incredible rack mount unit. Anyway, check out that full review and let's go to the farm really quick and you can watch me mount it. The audio is bad. I don't have great remote microphones. Uh, so I'm just using my GoPro. Maybe someday I'll get like really nice clip on mics. Today is not that day. Anyway, let's go to the farm.
Okay, so this is the NetGate 4100. And like I said, I just have it in uh, my rack, just sitting on top of a micro tick, a micro, yeah, micro tick switch. However, this is the rack mount adapter and I'm going to put it in here. So the cool thing is that actually, so the front of it has USB ports, which will uh, plug into the side of the device because there are USB ports right there and it actually fits side or sits backwards. So this will actually be in the back of the switch and all of the ports will be on the front, just like a rack mount switch that you buy from the store. Uh, and also, if you look underneath, say I actually have those rubber feet, uh, I'm going to take those off because it makes it a little bit bigger than one U. But anyway, so I'm going to take this out and I'm just going to mount it in the rack and I'll show you what it looks like afterwards. It just has little screws that go in. I'm actually going to leave it running because it's actually routing traffic right now. So I'm going to try to leave it running while I do all the uh, putting in there, but I'll take a quick video snippet of it mounted before I put it into the rack if I can figure out how to do that. We'll see. Okay, so uh, the rack mount is is pretty easy to use and see it sits in, like I said, backwards. So the, the front of the unit with the lights will actually point towards the back of the rack, which puts the ports in the front, which is great. Uh, the only downside is the screws that you use which actually will uh, mount the unit to the side here. And see there's like little cutouts here to screw them in. Like that's fine and they're long and they screw right into that aluminum uh, heat sink on the bottom. But the downside is they are apparently Allen wrench uh, screws. Like the heads are Allen wrenches and I don't actually have that. They also, they have a little bit of like finger tightening edges so maybe i can get my fingers in there and at least snug it up mostly and maybe come in at a later time with a set of allen wrenches i just don't have one here at the farm right now but anyway a little allen wrench key would have been nice uh, to include uh, or just phillips head screws because i mean it's not like I, I don't know why they aren't just phillips heads but anyway uh a minor minor complaint but i'm gonna mount it now so just another note about the design uh, thought process. A lot of good thoughts went in here. If you look, I don't know if you can see, but the USB ports that extend it to the front of the unit uh, plug in nicely. And they even made room to make sure that the screw in there uh, would not be in the way, nor would this little piece of aluminum. I was able to plug those in after mounting the router onto the adapter. And I did get the screws uh, pretty finger tight. I don't. I mean, the router is not going to go anywhere. Um, and, you know, sometime I'll just bring a, an Allen key or Allen wrench and, uh, and snug them up the rest of the way. Not because I'm worried it's going to fall out, uh, but because I really want to uh, make sure that the, the screws, which is the part that screws into the aluminum heat sink, I want to make sure that that transmits the heat out to, uh, you know, the aluminum case itself. Because uh, while it's a small point of contact, it will transmit enough heat uh, out to this whole unit that it will be worthwhile to have that there. Uh, they also included like some zip straps. I could zip strap this down, but I'm not. I'm just going to let it lay there. It's not going to go anywhere. And then I'll show you one, once it's mounted, but we're going to have all the stuff on the front uh, just as if it were a rack mount router. router. Okay, uh, it's actually in place. Believe it or not, I, I never had to um, turn off the router or unplug any of the network or power cables uh, to manipulate it. I did take those rubber feet off the bottom, which I had stuck on when I took it out of the box. They don't come with them stuck on. Uh, and it mounted just fine. It went into the rack without any problems. And in fact, it's kind of cool. Um, I didn't realize it, but because it mounts on the side with a little bit of room, there's actually some channels that go straight through where I'm able to like put the power cord. So it just goes right back there and the few network cords uh, can go right through the side or the middle here, whichever. And it just makes it nice and clean. I don't have to worry about cable management for this particular device in this spot. Now, you know, of course I have spots where I'm gonna have to, you know, bring cables out uh, anyway, uh, but it's just, you know, one more thing where they don't have to like go over top of that switch above it. Um, and I did actually put it below. It was above the switch before. Anyway, the rack mount uh, adapter is so much nicer than I even expected. 
Um, I highly recommend that if you're gonna get one of these and put it in a rack, that you get the rack kit. The console that I had to use because I locked myself out, uh, it can be either an RJ45 or that little micro SB, which is what I used, and it came with this little cable as well, which I plugged into my Linux laptop and was just able to connect and reset that password in like 10 seconds. So anyway, that's the NetGate SG4100. I highly recommend it. It's just as awesome in person as it seems on paper and my blog, and I'll see you next time. So yeah, it's um, it's a really cool looking unit. I, I actually like how they flipped it backwards. So all the ports are on the front exactly like a rack mount router would be instead of just like mounting a desktop one with ears, like a lot of uh, rack mount adapters that you have for desktop units end up just like putting ears on the side. And so, you know, all the ports would have still been in the back. So they flipped it around. It actually looks like, uh, you know, a rack mount router kind of because the ports are all in the front but anyway it's it's a great unit it does full gigabit without any hesitation it has a lot of features i'm not a big like have your router do stuff kind of guy but i have to admit it has so many great features that i might run a couple services on it at the very least intrusion detection and things like that to protect my my internal network anyway the SG4100 is a great router. It's about, it's $599, which is a lot if you're just like a home user and you don't have a specific need for that much routing power. But getting an off the shelf router to do full gigabit, especially gigabit up and down is quite a chore. Uh, so uh, if that's what you need, you know, something that's a little more expensive makes sense. If you have no desire to uh, do some serious routing, uh, then, you know, one of their lower end models will probably fill the, uh, fill the need that you have, or, you know, just an off to the shelf router. If, if you're just going to browse Netflix and you know, you're going to play Wordle, uh, you, you don't have to have a super powerful router to do that. But if you're looking for a good router, I have to admit the 4100 is amazing. See you next time.